The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is Your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Now, for a moment, we're going to hear from a representative of our sponsor, the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. As a representative of the Equitable Society, I naturally sell all types of life insurance. But the one that gives me the greatest personal satisfaction is an Equitable Education Fund. To date, 65 boys and girls have gone to college on Equitable Education Funds I planned with their fathers. In approximately 14 minutes, I'll be back to give the whole story of an Equitable Education Fund, an important contribution to American education made by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Tonight's FBI file, The Friendly Stowaway. The Federal Bureau of Investigation has just completed a survey of the arrests made by police all over the United States in the first six months of this year. A survey which depressingly shows that overall, crime increased 2.7% in the cities of our nation and more than three times that much in our rural area. That means that if the present six-month period shows a similar increase, last year's record number of a million and a half major crimes will be shattered beyond recognition. And while this is a country which is constantly breaking records of one kind or another, this is not one to which we as a people can point with pride. As was said earlier, the survey which points out those facts serves a very useful purpose to the men of your FBI, for with it they can study the movements of their enemies. It can also serve a useful purpose for you who are listening to this program, because it does serve warning to everyone that something must be done, and done quickly, to turn the tide. Your local police can do that job with a little help from you. A little support, which will show them that you stand behind them. That you acknowledge them to be what they are. Your first line of defense in the war against crime. Tonight's file opens in a town located on the banks of a river in one of our eastern states. It is evening. A coal barge tied to a pier can be seen dimly through a heavy fog. Inside the shanty of the barge, a bedridden old lady listens to the radio. And that's the mystery tune on Phone Your Fortune this week. Can you name it? If you can, and you're the one we call, you get a round-the-world trip with stopovers in New York, London, Paris, Cairo, Tokyo, Honolulu, and Hollywood. In addition... You comfortable, Ma? You still... <laughs> You're listening to that again? <laughs> but, Ma, what's the sense? Hmm. What do you mean? We got no telephone. I still like it. You go to work. I did everything. You looked at the bridle? No. There's almost time for the talk, Peter. Go look at them. All right. Take a light. I don't need it. In bad fog outside, take a light. All right, Ma. Bye. Who's that? Hey, you hear me? Hey, you, stop. I got you. Let go. Girl, what are you doing here? I, I need help. Why? I'm in trouble. I'm being chased. Police? No. No, look, I'll tell you about it later. Just hide me now. But we pull out in ten minutes. That's good. Hide me, please, I beg you. You can save my life. All right. Here. Get under that canvas. <laughs> Miss? 
come up now. Thank you. We're moving. To where? Down the river to Whitestone, delivering coal. Oh. You want some coffee? I brought it. Oh, thank you. I can't tell you how grateful I am. That's all right. I... I suppose you're wondering what this is all about, why I'm here. Yes, I, I am. Well, I... I don't quite know how to tell you. You said you were in trouble. That's right. You are being chased. Yes. Who was chasing you? My... my stepfather. Why? Oh, I might as well tell you everything. He's abused me for years. He resents and hates me. He always has. Tonight before I ran away, he tried to beat me. Hit you? He started to, but I screamed and ran. I crossed the field, went through a wood. He followed. Then I came to the river. The rest you know. If he finds out that I'm on this boat, he'll have it followed. Have me taken off. I, I know he will. No, miss. I won't let him. You mm mean? -hmm. Yes. Oh, you're wonderful. You want some more coffee? I'd love some. My mother will make you some more. Your mother? I is she here on this bar? Yes, in the shanty. Come and meet her. Well, I... I wonder if I should. Why? Well, she might not understand. You're in trouble, miss. She'll understand. Come along. <laughs> Meanwhile, that same evening at a nearby FBI field office, Special Agent Jim Taylor approaches a fellow agent's desk. Hi, Tom. Oh, hello, Jim. Well, you on complaint desk? Mm-hmm. Anything come in for me? Not a thing. I was expecting some word on that Jenkins case. You gonna be here a while, Jim? Yep. Yeah, I have to work. Do you mind answering phones so a starving man could get some nourishment? No. No, I'd be glad to. I won't be gone long, Jim. Okay. Oh, by the way, the police up in Madison may call in. They should have a follow-up report for us. Now, on what? An escape prisoner. Mm -hmm. What's the story? You know that cheese box prison up at Clayton? A women's prison? Yeah, one mm -hmm. of the inmates opened her cell door with a bent hairpin. What? Stole a car outside the prison and drove it over the state line to Madison. Oh, who is she? Her name's on the report right in front of you. Uh, this one? Yeah. Ann Slater? Yeah, that's it. We know anything about her? No, but her arrest record is on the way. Prison warden is teletyping us a report. Okay, I'll watch out for it, Tom. Now go on, get something to eat. Go ahead, miss. Thank you. Ma may be sleeping. I must be. Oh. <laughs> The radio was off, so I, I thought... I found it off. I heard talking. She's the one you were talking to? Yes, ma. This is Miss... Miss... Jackson. Uh... Anne Jackson. That's my mother, Mrs. Benici. I'm pleased to meet you, Mrs. Benici. Peter, why is she on the boat? Well, she... She was in trouble, ma. What kind? She was running away from her stepfather. He... He tried to beat her. Why did she come here? He was chasing me. I, I just saw your barge and jumped on board. Why didn't you call the police? Well, in America, it's against the law to hit people. I had no time. If I'd stopped, he'd have caught me. Now we got to help her. How? Let her ride with us to Whitestone. She can sleep in here. Use my bunk. Oh, no. I can roll up on deck. I like it there. What do you say, Ma? Well, she's on board. She stays on board. Thank you. Thank you so much. I better go out and check light. You can turn in now, miss. Well, I I'm really not sleepy. Can I go out with you? Sure. Go ahead, miss. Yes, Peter. <laughs> yes, ma. Did you see? See this man who was chasing her? No. Why? I just wondered. Good night, Peter. <laughs> FBI 
FBI. Yes. Mm hmm. Yes, thank you very much. Think I got lost, Jim? Huh? No, no, you weren't long, Tim. Anything come in? Yeah, a report from the Madison Police. One of their motorcycle men found the car that was used by the girl who escaped from Clayton. Oh, and a lead on her? No, the car was found abandoned in the woods down in the river. Oh, the uh, warden of a Clayton called and gave me a prison record. What was she in for? Grand larceny. She had a pattern, Tom. You used to get a job as a social secretary mm -hmm. and stay with an employer for about three months, steal what she could, and then run. Any personal background? Yeah. Uh, she's well-educated. College degree. Didn't adjust to prison. Felt herself above her fellow inmates. And two weeks before the break, she tried to stab one of them. Nice girl. After the stabbing, the warden had her examined by the prison psychiatrist. His report was that she was completely neurotic with definite homicidal tendencies. Well, that makes this case a little more important. I'd say very important, Tom. You see, when she made the break, she also commandeered a gun. Oh. Now, you couple that with the psychiatrist's report, and she becomes a very likely candidate to kill anyone who gets in her way. Yeah. Oh, I called the SAC at home, Tom. I gave him a full report on the girl. He's assigned us to work on the case. He wants us to get up to Madison first thing in the morning. Off because of me. I didn't. I turned it off because I want to talk to you. Oh? I'd like to ask you some questions. Sure. What about? The story you told Peter. About how I came here? That's right. Would you tell it again to me? Of course. My stepfather tried to beat me. It wasn't the first time. I, I just couldn't take it anymore. But when I ran away, he followed me. I got to the river and jumped aboard your barge. I don't think you tell the truth. What do you mean? While you were on deck with Peter, a man was on the radio. He told about a girl. Yes. He said she wore a coat, a brown coat like you have on. Also a brown hat like yours. What about her? He said that the police were looking for her. He said that she had run away from a prison. Oh, now, Mrs. Amici, surely you don't think that he was describing me. I do. But I've already told you. You told a lie. Call Peter in here. What for? I want to tell him what I heard on the radio. I want him to signal the tug. They must pull in to shore. Why, Mrs. Amici? You must be brought to the police. But I'm not that girl. Oh, they'll call Peter. I don't see why we should, Mrs. Amici. You're completely mistaken about me. Peter! I... That is not calling, Mrs. Amici. You see, I have a gun here. If he came in and believed you, I'd have to kill him. Turn to tonight's exciting FBI file in just a moment. Just last Monday, the American Institute of Public Opinion released the results of a nationwide opinion survey. Hundreds of typical Americans were asked this one question. Everybody makes mistakes now and then. Will you tell me what you consider to be the biggest mistake of your life so far? And here's the answer that was given by the largest number of people. I didn't get enough education. Right. Education pays, and pays well. For example... The average college graduate is nearly 15 times as likely to make $10,000 a year all over as a non-college man. Yes, the odds are 15 to 1 in favor of college education. That's one of many reasons why the Equitable Life Assurance Society created the famous Equitable Education Fund. It's a plan for parents who want to make certain that their children get the higher education that means so much to their future success in life. First and foremost... An equitable education fund is sure. S-U-R-E. Right. This fund combines planned regular saving with life insurance. So if the father dies or becomes permanently disabled, 
This plan makes certain that his children will still be able to get the education he was ambitious for them to have. Second advantage, an equitable education fund is easy. You'll be amazed how quickly a comparatively small monthly payment builds up into a sum that is ample to see a boy or girl through college. Remember, the odds in favor of a college education are 15 to 1. So how can any parent who truly loves his children hesitate even for a moment? Resolve now to see your Equitable Society representative without delay. Ask him for complete facts and figures on an Equitable Education Fund. Or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, The Friendly Stowaway. Tonight's case from the files of your FBI accents two important points. The first is illustrated by the fact that in this case you meet a young girl who is well-educated, who seems to possess above the average intelligence, but who, despite that, is a dangerous criminal. This is conclusive proof that there is no criminal type, no peculiarities by which you can tell them apart from the law-abiding person. The second point is illustrated by the fact that this young girl escaped from a small local prison by opening the door to her cell with her hairpin which makes apparent the conditions now existing in many local small-town prisons. Not every jail need be an Alcatraz, but it does little good for the police of the nation to apprehend the criminal and then to see that same criminal escape with something approaching ease. Not only does little good to have that happen, but on the contrary, it does harm. And that harm is done to you, the tax-paying citizen, because every search takes time and men and money, your money. For that reason, it is to your best interest to see to it that your local jail is strong enough to hold the prisoner it gets. Hold them until they have served their sentences. Night's file continues the next morning at local police headquarters in Madison. Hi, John. Well, I was just going to send a posse out for you. Oh, I've been out brushing up on my wood law. Oh, where? The local police, combing the woods with the Slater girl, left the car. Is it worthwhile? Partially, I found some heel prints, female variety. They led down to a pier on the river. You sure that along the girl we're checking? Yeah. Local police identified them as the type that's worn by inmates at Clayton. Any leads at the pier? No. No one around there could remember having seen her. Hmm. Could have been a rendezvous point. I doubt that, John. She was a loner. Oh, excuse me. Sure. Special Agent Ramsey. Well, sure, just a minute. For you, Jim. Oh. Special Agent Taylor speaking. Yes. Good. Yeah, that'd be about the right time, too. Hmm? Where was that? When? Thanks very much. Goodbye. Ah, now we're getting someplace. Who is that? A man from a local towing company. He said one of his tugs pulled a string of coal barges out of that pier that the girl was traced to. When was this? Last night, and just about the time that Ann Slater got to the river. Where are the barges headed for? Down river to Whitestone. They'll get there late tonight. She could very easily have hidden aboard one of those barges. That's right, Tom. We'd better grab a plane, set it down near Whitestone, and try to intercept her. <laughs> Coffee, Ma? No, please, please. How about you, Miss Jackson? No, thank you. You ain't been out on deck this morning. How about some air? I think I'd just as soon stay in here. Keep your mother company. Oh, that's good. No radio this morning, Ma? No. When will we get to Whitestone? Be late tonight. In spite of the fog? Oh, sure. Well, I got some work to do on deck. If you want anything, just call me. Thank you, Peter. I will. I'm grateful to you, Mrs. Benucci. You're being very cooperative. Only for Peter. 
I realize that. You're a good mother, and he's a fine son. And if you just continue to keep quiet, you'll both survive. <laughs> This isn't going to be too easy to locate. Now, we should be able to pick up the running lights. What's the name of this tug we're looking for? Cyrus Jones. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you tell the skipper? Yeah. He doesn't think she's faster yet. He says those barge strings only travel about it. It's all five knots an hour. Yeah. Thanks ahead. Where, skipper? Off the port side. Oh, yeah. Will you head for them? Begin to take shape up there now. Yeah. I think I make out what looks like a tug. You're right, Tom. It is a tug. That's a string of barges behind it. Well, this should be what we're looking for. I don't want to scare you or anything, but when well, the boat pulled up alongside the tug, four or five men in it, I I think they're police. They moved back to the first barge. Looks like they're searching That's it. That's good. Good. Mart could be her stepfather looking for her. We got to hide her, Mart. No, son. But if her stepfather... Peter, I want to thank you for your loyalty, but I have no stepfather. The police are looking for me for other reasons. She escaped from prison, Peter. Huh? I heard it on the radio. No. I know that's shocking to you, I'm afraid this gun will be an even bigger blow. God. I want you to see it, Peter, because if you don't do what I ask, well, I'd have to shoot your mother. What are you talking about? Oh, yes. Now, there isn't much time. They'll be coming to this barge next. Now, I want you to go out on deck, meet those men, tell them that I'm not on board. Do you understand, Peter? But I... No, but, please. I'll stay in the cabin here with your mother. If anything should go wrong, well, you know what will happen. There's their boat now. They must be coming aboard. Please go, Peter. I'll go. But first, I got to tell you. If anything happens to my gun or no gun... I gotta go. All right. Hello, aboard there. Hello. Give me a hand up, will you, please? You coming aboard? Yeah. Here. Here. I... Thanks. I'm a special agent of the FBI, Mr. Bermigi. You know my name? Yes, I got it from the tug. Oh, here. These are my credentials. I see. I'm looking for a young girl. On one of these barges? That's right. We're pretty sure she jumped aboard one of them before the string left Madison last night. My mother and me were the only ones on this barge. You, uh, you mind if I look around? The girl couldn't be on this barge without me knowing it. Oh, I, I see that piece of canvas there is loose at one end. She might have come aboard without your seeing her and find one of that. You want to look? There. Can you see? Nothing under there but coal. Yeah. Well. Well, let's see what we find on the next barge. And if she isn't there... I don't know. We'll just have to go back to Madison and start all over again. I see. Oh, uh, thanks for cooperating. You're welcome. Here, I'll help you. Oh, thanks. Okay, Skipper. Next barge? That's right. Goodbye, Mr. Bye. Peter. You all right, Ma? Yes. <laughs> How close are we to Whitestone? 30, 40 minutes. What's the procedure when we get there? What? What happens to the barge? Fly up to the coal dock. Unload. Other people come aboard? That's right. Many people? Quite a few. That would complicate my getting ashore. 
You know, it just might make things simpler if I were to use this gun now. What do you mean? If I were to kill you. Mm. Are you kidding? No, Peter. I realize it sounds terribly cold-blooded to you, but I have myself to think of it. such wrong in the head. That's not true, Mrs. Amici. I have full possession of my faculties. I know exactly what I do and what I'm about to do now is right. Stand over there, Peter. No. Very well. Then I shall have to shoot you from here. All right, drop it. Away! Let go of me! I have a gun, Jim. Go ahead. Looks like we came back just in time. All right, miss, come along. And I think we can find a prison this time that'll hold you. Ann Slater, alias Jackson, was prosecuted, found guilty, and sentenced to a five-year term for violation of the National Motor Vehicle Theft Act. She was then returned to the state prison to serve the balance of her sentence. Special Agent Taylor returned to the barge of Peter Bemidji because when he got back to the tug to report that he was returning to shore, he learned that Mrs. Bemidji was bedridden and that she used no cosmetics of any kind. He remembered, however, that when he lifted the canvas on the barge, he had seen a coffee cup, a coffee cup that bore a telltale smudge of fresh lipstick. And so another case from the files of your FBI was closed. In passing... It might be of interest to note that when the number of days this girl was sentenced to was divided by the amount of money she had stolen, it showed that she was serving her time for the price of approximately 45 cents a day, which should demonstrate to all who have not yet been convinced that crime in any shape or form cannot be made to pay. just a moment, we will tell you about next week's exciting case from the files of your FBI. But first, let's hear briefly from an Equitable Society representative on the subject of an Equitable Education Fund. Remember, folks, like everything else, the cost of a college education has gone way up. You'll take an awful beating paying for it in four years. Why not spread the cost over 10 or 15 years by starting an Equitable Education Fund without delay? The man whose words you have just heard speaks for 6,000 Equitable Society representatives from coast to coast who are always ready to give you friendly help and counsel. If you do not know the name of the Equitable Man in your community, send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Another factual account of a criminal double cross. Its subject, larceny. Its title, The Helpful Hobo. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious. And any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry D. Lewis. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. Others in the cast were Whitfield Connor, Georgia Ellis, J.C. Flippin, Peggy Weber, and Roland Winter. This is your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community, and inviting you to tune in again next week at the same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the helpful hobo on This is Your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.